Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're going to have another look today at progress on building uh, the 09 gauge model of the Earl, which was, as we know, is the first steam train um, I ever drove. So this, this model is kind of um, important. I, I want to get it right. And as we've already seen um, with the with the kit in the past couple of videos, there are some issues that we're going to work through. Partly this is because, of course, uh, it, the, the kit doesn't necessarily come with wheels, gears, motor, etc. So we're having to adapt to those things we can get so if you remember at the end of the last video uh, we got part way through um, building the gearbox I folded it up uh, but I knew that I was going to have to do some modifications to actually be able to completely uh, build the thing specifically so that it would sit correctly within the frame well within the body of the locomotive I basically need to get the motor quite low down and quite far forward so that the wheels um, can be almost under the under the cab but the motor further forward into the boiler so I've done all those um, adjustments I actually had to do slightly more adjustments than I expected once I started uh, looking at how it would fit into the body in more detail and we'll come to that in a minute but you can have as you can see here so I have cut away quite aggressively at the bottom corner here of the gearbox sides that allows this bottom piece to swing without the the nine millimeter gauge wheels catching the gearbox if you come to right to this end they, they do just fit past but it's a very tight fit and the chances are they're likely to short so in reality it's going to be folded all the way around here the wheels are well away from the gearbox side and we're not going to get any shorts we also talked about the fact that I would have to notch um, this part so that it would clear the gear so you can see um, if we can get it to focus you can see there it clears this gear uh, when it's in place I also had to um, reduce the side the length of this side of the part you can see they're no, no longer no equal not equally length that's because there's a washer in here and if once I spin this up um, it was jamming on the washer about here which wasn't far enough up so I've rotated it around like that uh, when I also when I started to put it into the into the frames and we'll see this in a bit more detail in a minute um, the very rounded tops, this this top essentially came straight out and then round a corner and I've cut that triangle off on both sides um, and again that means that when the motor's rotated kind of all the way forward like this, this top now is almost flat so it's there's nothing sticking further up uh, that would that would interfere with the body. Uh, the other thing I did was there's a, there's a locating screw here um, a hole in the in the gearbox here so that if you want to fit the motor the other the kind of 90 degrees uh, for some reason uh, then you can do but again that lug protruded above the side of the motor um, so again I've filed that off so that there's no there's no more high spots um, and that now folds nicely and it does run um, I've not got wires attached to it at the moment but I promise it does run if I if I manage to uh, shoot some extra footage I'll stick it I'll stick it up here uh, of it turning around and around and around but it does it does run nicely um, so yeah, so that's okay. So the next thing is making sure that this fits in the in the chassis with the body in place. So I've done a little bit uh, of work on the body, uh, not a huge amount uh, as yet. Uh, the only thing that's actually permanently fixed on here is the the the, the nut in this foot foot plate part. I, I've glued that in um, just because it was easier to screw the thing in. So that's just screwed into the chassis at the back, the foot plate. Uh, this is the cylinder on one side. It's just slotted in a hole, uh, and this this plate here is just to lift the smoke box to the right height um, and give a lip at the front. And that's just it's just stuck on with some wax at the moment, uh, not glue, so it doesn't fall off. But my those are the parts that I kind of need in place to be able to kind of try and show how the rest of this upper body will fit, so that we can work out whether the motor fits. So. Um, if I put the motor between the frames, it will sit down on the wheels, and you can see it sits quite nice and not quite nice and far forward. If I can get it so you can see it, and as I say, this bit is now almost almost flat. There's no real high spots. Motor will have to come up ever so slightly because otherwise it's touching these central wheels, uh, which will be a problem. But it's it's quite nice and low and far forward, so that's all good. Um, but that then brings us to some problem with some other parts in the kit. And, we're just going to look at these briefly, probably with some blue tack to hold everything in place. Um, so here we have some more of the kit parts. So what we have is the back of the cab. Uh, this has a recess in it. So it sits on the floor at the back like that. And that's nice and straightforward. Uh, the tank sides 
have this cutout here. And now that cutout fits into um, these recesses on the underside of the floor. I didn't get that at first. I thought that they were slotting onto this thinned edge at the front. Um, so I thought they were doing essentially oops, that, if you can see. Um, but that has all sorts of fitment issues. But they actually slide on like that. And it says in the instructions to push them as far backwards as possible on the floor part because the doorway is quite narrow, something I actually remember from, from driving it. Now, I've got it all screwed together so you can see that this part of the tank here should fit, well, sorry, the front of the tank, oops, that's just come off the waxy bit. We'll get back to that later. The front of the tank part has this other piece of foot plate on it, of chassis, and that's supposed to put flush up to the cylinder like that. So that works quite nicely. Okay, that's all. That's all okay. The problem then comes when we try and put the rest of it on. So the smoke box um, probably isn't all going to hold together properly. The smoke box goes goes on here like that, and the boiler has this tiny little lip around the front which goes into the into the smoke box like that. Oops, it's, it's, there's not a huge lip but it, it does it does fit and hold so that goes together like that and then the boiler um, should this the, the smoke box should go on the top and it's a bit difficult to see because my fingers and everything else but if I hold all this in place in roughly the right place as I say it's a bit finicky um, I did have it held together with some blue tack uh, which was a bit easier but not much um, anyway you can see that if I put you should be able to see if I get everything to as I say go together nicely um, what you'll see is that I need another hand probably uh, let's try that so there we go so that's just about in the right place now um, except I've got the cylinder the wrong way around so it won't fit. So that's in the right place now, like that. So that's all. As I said, it's fussy, finicky. Right, so that's all in the right place like that. The boiler's in here. Now if I put the smoke box on the front, you'll have to trust me it's in roughly the right place, uh, there's a gap here. It doesn't fit. Uh, the, boilers need, the boiler needs to be all the way back hit front here, but that puts the smoke box off the front of the loco. So other people who have built it have also seen this this problem and a couple of people have pointed out that if you actually put the the, the boiler in the right place then you end up with a gap between the foot plate and the cylinder at the front um, which again is not is not right um, and it also means that the cab back hangs an awful long way off the back of the chassis something we did know was a, a problem it's already it's way too short anyway uh, but it becomes exceptionally overhanging um, if you do that so I need to sort that problem before I know exactly where this cutout piece appears so that I know where the motor will fit because essentially the motor will fit kind of in the frames and something like kind of like that uh, oops if I get it in the view something like that inside the boiler um, but obviously I need to know exactly where the cutout is to know exactly how far backwards, forwards, downwards this needs to needs to go to all fit. Um, <clears throat> so I'd had a, a number of thoughts. Firstly, I'd wondered about fitting, instead of fitting the tanks like that, which leave this unsightly gap at the front uh, against the cylinder, I could pull the tank back slightly, leave a gap and then fill it, fill the gap. Um, which would put everything in place, although it would make the coal bunkers here, uh, which appear inside the cab, smaller. Well, it would it would put everything back inside the cab smaller, which I don't really want to do. I'd possibly, to get everything to fit properly in the cab, I then may have to trim this end, which I could do with a file and wouldn't be too too terrible, but um, it's, not, it's not perfect. Um, but I was looking at the parts and realizing that, well, currently this smoke box, the, the boiler and the smoke box mate by just clipping on this tiny little lip around the front here um, but I thought well what happens if I could open up the inside of this smoke box to be a bigger diameter so that the the boiler would just slide in and this part of the boiler would fit and then I could move it just that few little millimeters further forwards um, and everything would suddenly line up um, now I couldn't think of a good way of doing doing that and getting it nice and the right shape and nice and circular 
I could try and mount this on the lathe. I'd have to put something through the, the, the hole here where the smoke box door will fit, hold it tight, and then turn the inside to get the lip um, so going. But I'd have to be very careful that that was properly centered um, and that's probably well beyond my current machining skills. I can basically put some round stock in a lathe and turn something from it very simply. Like um, I turned the coupling pins for the 16 millimeter simplex. I've turned some wheels, some spectacle glasses, but they're all essentially something turned from uh, round stock rather than mounting some kind of complex shape when trying to bar out the inside. So instead what I did, and some people will hate this with an all metal white metal kit, I've 3D printed a smoke box. Now, this isn't perfect yet. Um, come on, focus for me. There are a couple of issues. It's ever so slightly a fraction too tall, which means that the boiler ends up sitting up ever so slightly at an angle. Um, so I need to just drop it down. It's fractions of a millimetre, I think. Uh, but obviously over a long distance, that kind of shows up. Um, and it doesn't have um, any rivet detail around the outside yet. But again, that's easy enough to add um, to the 3D model and I can print that. The I've got the hole in the front for the smoke box door, hole for the chimney. I've got slot for the mounting screw. Um, the nut I've actually already glued in here and I don't have a spare. Um, I think they're a 10BA um, bolt. I don't have a spare one. Um, I've got some 12s, but they're a bit small. So I'll have to prise this one out of here and, and use it. But um, this seems, I think, to be a fairly good solution because what you can do is it just slides on over the over the boiler. I'm going to make it slightly tighter. It's a bit loose at the moment. It wobbles. Uh, I'm going to make it slightly tighter so it's a nice push fit. But it does mean now that when I put the, the smoke box on the loco, I can position the boiler um, anywhere I want within quite a large range, uh, which means that I can put the tank exactly where I want against the both the floor and butt up against this cylinder here. And then I can put the fingers 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 I can put the so you can see that's nicely butt up against there that's kind of butt up against the tanks and then I can just slide the smoke box as far forwards as I need it's all a bit messy but I can get it flush uh, with the front of the local as it's supposed to be it's never gonna you're never gonna be able to see this all sideways on but you get there I took a photo I'll put it up here with blue tack and all ba ba balanced um, and it looks like it all should fit it also means that <clears throat> these um, slots here in the chassis how far where the slide bar will fit for the motion um, and that on a diagram I've seen seems to line up with the front of the tanks and if I put this up against the cylinder where is it gone no that way around if I put this up against the cylinder correctly then you can see that there's the slot just there, there's the front of the tanks. That looks to me like it lines up perfectly. That will also help hold um, these tank sides um, in place because they will rest on the top of the slide bar bracket. Um, so that should hopefully keep everything nice and level. Uh, but it looks like <coughs> that's the that's the solution, um, is this 3D printed um, barrel. But that means now I know that if I put this in here again, if I put the we put the motor back through the body. There we go. Um, I know that I want the. I'll uh, put the other one on so it might be easier for everybody to see. So I know I want the the body side on like. As I said there aren't enough hands with this all just kind of balanced together. It's um it's a bit f messy. Um, right, there we go. So um. Right, so that's there. So we can see that the the floor clears the back of the gearbox. So that's not a problem. And we can also see, if I can tip it sideways, um, that the top of the um, the top of the tank is above the level of the wheel of the motor. And now, when I slot this in here, it's literally resting on the top of the gearbox. Um, which is pretty damn perfect. As I say, I'm going to have to probably fire a little bit more off the top of the gearbox and possibly some off the inside of this casting just so that I can lift this a fraction upwards um, so that it's not resting on the wheels. But I think it's pretty damn good. Um, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably have to assemble most of this bodywork 
and then literally kind of um, hold it all together upside down check that with the upside down and hence gravity pulling the motor down to hit the top the inside of the body um, that it clears these wheels and if it does then I can kind of hold everything in place uh, and tack on some kind of spacer to hold the, the gearbox in place it's going to be fiddly um, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to hold everything but that's the that's the plan and I think it's the only way I'm going to be able to know for certain um, that I've got this, this this gearbox in the right place I mean I could probably just tack it in so it's just off the wheels and I think I could probably then make it fit uh, and that might be what I end up doing that might be easier but I had to I had to prove that there was enough space before I could go ahead and do that um, and it does it does rely on essentially having this this piece of the boiler in far enough forwards um, to fit properly uh, but it's it's nice this clears the floor everything seems to seems to fit so I want to finish this I want to get it right so the boiler is definitely sitting level and make sure I can do all the rivets and stuff before I before I go any further uh, and then then hopefully though as I say I'll, I'll start to gently um, attach some of this bodywork together I think it needs um, it will need kind of gluing or, or white metal soldering uh, I'll probably glue it my soldering skills are not great and I do not want to melt any of the the castings um, but then with with that all in place hopefully um, everything else the cylinders and things should just kind of fit and hold in place I shouldn't have to glue them all onto the chassis while I still work out with the position of the motor uh, so yeah so I think I think that's all going to work now I think I've got the length right um, as I say it also has the added advantage now that if I if I put this uh, body cast this shell on the back you can see the back of the chassis now is very close to the back of the cab which is good it means I can just literally glue the book well solder possibly the buffer beam um, in place on the back of the chassis where I cut it off um, and it's going to line up almost perfectly um, I might have to add a tiny tiny thin packing piece but it'll be very thin I think I can probably get away with just literally just soldering the piece I cut off back on um, and that should that should fit and it should mean that everything lines up almost perfectly um, without much in the way of, um, of adjustment everything will line up at the front the chassis won't be too long the smoke box will hold everything in place motor will fit uh, and then that's it I can carry I can actually build it together but until but as I say until I can prove for perf that this definitely fits um, I don't want to go any further but that's where we are it's actually quite quite a lot really as I say motor all works checked out all the other parts figured out how they all fit and and then obviously this um, doesn't actually take too long it took me about 20 minutes to knock up the first version measuring off the kit part it takes about <clears throat> 40 minutes to print um, it's not a particularly complex print it prints kind of that way up on the bed so that's the my fingers the bed it prints that way up um, with the slot for the for the bolt and everything else um, so yeah that's the plan hopefully it'll work we'll see and uh, yeah we'll see how we are in the next video how far I've, how far i've got uh, but thanks for watching and don't forget if you want to keep up to date with more more videos as we build this then please remember to subscribe thanks